the School of Planning and Architecture. Before we actually get into exploring their campus and what it's like being here, let's get to know their courses a little bit. today architecture is getting very corporatized in the sense when you're taught are you taught specifically to design business centers or malls or you know office spaces or is there a lot of like can you become a freelance interior designer if you choose to not in our college as far as uh, i have experienced uh, i'm a second year student and uh, the projects uh, that we've been uh, we've been given and uh, the problems that we've been given they cover a lot of aspects as uh, as as uh, green buildings and as uh, environmental uh, susceptible designs right. Ta talking about like you know everything from environment planning to urban planning to transport planning to just a plain old architecture you can study anything over here but what about hands on experience when do you actually go out there and get work experience while you are studying at SPA when does that happen uh, in terms of the formal experience what we can say is the eighth semester in the fourth year where we go for our training. It's asked like an intern where we work for six months under an architect. Have any of you done that over here? All any of, of us, as in the, all where, the final years. Where did you work and what was that experience like? Is it very, very important to also work while you're at a college like SPA? Yes, it does become important because finally after a year, we are going to be architects and we are going to be in the field. Mm -hmm. We are going to meet, we are going to handle people like the contractors, the masons, the interior designers, the electrical So workers. during your internship, was this a huge eye-opener, dealing with contractors and, you know, just basically getting out of your studios and into the field for real? Yeah, it is kind of, because you're not used to such kind of an experience while you're studying in college. So you walk out into the field and you realize there's so much of a difference in what you're taught while in studio and what you actually see on field. All right, guys, from thesis projects to on-field experience, we've spoken about it all, but what about the hostel life? A majority of SPA students come from out of town. You guys have a hostel here. What is that like? How much of it constitutes, a, like, you know, your SPA experience? What is it like? It uh, the hostel plays a major role as in in terms of where uh, our complete work happens here, yeah. and it is not possible for us to stay back here. Yeah. And the work culture as such, what we do, yeah. we work throughout the night. Right. Mostly we sleep in the day. Right. So it becomes very important for us to work in the hostel, yeah. and because we have so many group works, yeah. and it always becomes like it's it's not like I'm sitting in my room and I'm working my, myself. Yeah. Okay. And what about uh, extracurricular activities? Like, is there a lot that happens besides? Just the projects and the studio work and the inspiration at the hostel. Um, you see it. Actually, I am not a hostler. I am a day scholar. But uh, yes, hostlers have the most fun at the college because it's like you're living with your friends. So, you know, there's a lot of work happening. There's a lot of fun happening, a lot of ideas, a lot of brainstorming. You can have, you can, you can take breaks and then you can have jam sessions and you have movies. So it's basically a lot of fun. There's a courtyard, so there are games, sports. You don't it's really have that Delhi University campus where you've got 15 colleges around you. Do you feel that isolation is, at any time or do you feel that being an SPA is just good enough? Yeah, when it comes to when you restrict yourself to Delhi, yeah, we do get in kind of isolated because the university we don't belong to. So do, do you miss university. the campus action or it, like no, you know? No, but we have other opportunities. Like we have a society called uh, National Institute of uh, Students of Architecture NASA, which is an all India. Uh, 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 membership of all the colleges of architecture. Right. So you there call you this have NASA. yes, NASA. Right. Okay. So there, there we have a lot of uh, you know interactions with other colleges. We have competitions. We have cultural as well as academic competitions. So we kind of we divert all our energy. And what kind of socializing usually happens? Because at Delhi University, you've got so many different colleges. You end up hanging out with them maybe later in the evening. But over here, is it all very intra college? Like your friend circle is usually your hostel guys or pe like people from SPA. Do you end up interacting with a lot of other people also? Uh, there is there is a lot of interaction in the in the obviously with the with the friends but but uh, there is a restriction of interaction with outsiders but it helps uh, as in uh, it it is a positive as well as a negative uh, though you don't get to interact with outsiders. Are you saying you have a chip on your shoulder that we are SPA we really don't need any other campus or do you miss it like imagine if you had LSR like right over here would you would you want that or would you not? Obviously you would want that. Yeah you would want that. So, <laughs> so you sort of envy a Delhi University or a JNU or an IIT or even a Jamia where they've got like thousands of students around or do you think SPA is yeah I, I can see her you don't want an LSR around obviously yeah. No. I mean if it's there it's there but if, if it's not there I don't think it makes much of a difference. I mean we are a society in ourselves and we have enough people we don't have time to meet everyone in college ourselves. Very 
very quickly before we leave, like you know when someone's from DU, you call them a DUite. If you're from Hindu college, you're Hinduite. Stephens is, is Stephanian. What do you call someone who comes from SPA? Uh, we don't, I mean, maybe SPAites, but then we don't really you mean call there's, us... there's no universal term for... No, we have phrases or slogans which we might shout, but otherwise we don't call ourselves anything. So there is no term. You guys are just uh, future architects. That's it. No, we are from SPA. You are from SPA. SPA. Yeah. All right. On the staircase here, you don't see the dirty walls, no posters, no banners. No, no, this is SPA. You only see charcoal sketches made by the students themselves. And these drawings that you see behind me are not figments of someone's imagination. They're caricatures of the faculty here. That's right. This guy with the helicopter tied to his back is actually a teacher. Just like the ones we're going to hear from right now. Architecture gives you a design uh, education, design temperament, design attitude. It makes you an all-rounder. College has been my life. I was a student here in the 60s, and then I've been teaching for the last 28 years. So it's marvelous. I enjoy it. Well, it's been nearly 28 years now. It's a wonderful experience. I never regret it. It's sad our universities are cut off architecture from the field orientation. And it has been one of the strongest point of USPA. Where do you find, you know, there's uh, half a dozen students with their two faculty members are up in the mountains doing earthquake studies. Yeah, the environment in the school, uh, you know, is a little different from, uh, as you would imagine, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a normal uh, in a place of learning. I think that's got to do something with the nature of the subject, because the subject by itself is so rich and so, what should I say, rounded. Uh, that it sort of exposes you to all that you need to expose yourself to. It's like when you fly a kite. You know, you actually let the kite just fly initially and then you pull the strings and say, well, this is the way you go, my dear. So it's somewhat like that, where uh, we allow them to think a little wild and, uh, uh, you know, not get constrained by... So. Even students, you know, found to be... I mean, we were very liberal. It was easy to produce people like, you know, uh, Arundhati Roy, we won't kill them, you know, we will tolerate them, we'll let them come up. My God, it was very difficult for a person like Arundhati Roy to be her teacher. Oh, <laughs> it was not easy. Her teachers had to match with them. Right, so you've just heard from the teachers. I say it's about time we get back to the students. I've just walked into the SPA canteen, quite different if you ask me. Behind me there's this wall with black and white pictures taken from all over the country and for no reason at all they've got blocks of wood nailed in. Makes a lot of sense to them and ends up looking good. Also, you see a lot of students around doing their thing, most of them sketching. Their glass doors have spray-painted tire marks on them. This beam, of course, with paintings representing Delhi. All of it making the whole canteen look very different. Nothing like I've ever seen before at any of the campus canteens we've been to. We're meeting up with some of these architects of the future right now. Guys, we've got a sense of the kind of courses that we, we study over here, but what are the classrooms actually like? As in, do you have classes or is it mostly out of practical? First of all, we really do not call our classrooms classrooms. We call them studios and they are like really no chairs. We just have boards and it's fun. It's more a kind of a drawing class. So over here, the term used is not we're going to class, is it? Do you say we're going to studio Studios. now? Yeah, we're going to And how much practical work is there? How much, like at a Delhi university, you'll sit and you'll be staring at a blackboard, a teacher with a chalk teaching. Does that happen over here or what is like the work like when you study? Uh, the work is very, very practical. It's, it's it's, it's a lot to do with drawing, it's a lot to do with interaction with other people. With um, There is no stringent rule as to you have to stay in studio. Like from an outsider, I have no idea what you learn in architecture. How is the course divided? What are the first things you learn in your first year here and then go on to learn? Uh, well, to begin with, uh, when we get into our first years, the initial few weeks, we just asked to sketch. We just asked to bring out, I mean, maybe they're trying to figure out how good or bad we are. We just asked to sketch what is your favorite space, maybe what is, what is that thing which has inspired you a lot. And then we go on to learning the, how to make drawings, we do drafting, then we are taught the basics. He talks a lot about conceptualizing and design. You know, on the show, we've been to design schools where we've been to a NIFT or we've been to an engineering school like IIT. 
this place is like a combination of both. How important is it to have that artistic vision and also know your technical, you know, know how to sort of go ahead with architecture? Is it combining both? So architecture really involves, like you said, it involves a bit of art and it involves a lot of engineering as well. Some people are born with artistic abilities. That's not necessary for an for an architect, but he definitely has to have a creative bent of mind. So that and. Design comes from conceptualizing. How does, how does a typical day at SPA go? Say I'm a student that's looking at joining SPA. Is it all classroom, 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 and you know, a little break and then back? That's how it happens in most colleges. What is it like over here? How would you say, give me a, a description okay, of it. Uh, We've been in a class which lasts for three hours. Our studio lasts for three hours, okay, but more that- More than three hours. More right? than three hours, but it's not a classroom thing. You can get your food there, you can listen to music, you can wa keep yeah, watching yeah, movies yeah. if you want. And it's all about getting inspiration. You get inspiration from different things. You can, you, you might get a design idea. And it's promoted. Movie. Your teachers won't look yeah. at you and say, why are you watching no, a movie? No, not at all. I mean, that is how the design evolves. Another thing I want to ask you is what happens a lot of times when you're into a vocational field. For example, if I'm in the media, every time I would look at a shot or a film, I would say, okay, good shot, bad shot. Does that happen to you often when you're walking on the street when you're looking, yes. you're analyzing a building every time. Yes, yes, it's every time. When when we click when pictures, it, it becomes. It yeah, becomes you, you were saying something. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays, when we click pictures, it's not the people whom you are clicking. It's the building, the, the elevation. Does that happen that, to you, where you get your family to line up and you're actually clicking the building? No, I actually tell them to get out of the frame and let me click because, and they're like so irritated because half the pictures I have is only of buildings. And that's so, awesome. would it be fair to say that it's changed the way you look at the world? Your yes, course. it has. I have something to say. Uh, there, there's a saying which goes. Uh, you, you know you're an architect when you have more pictures of the sidewalk than of people. You know, so. Right, so architecture not as restrictive as most would imagine. As we sit around here in the canteen, there are final year students submitting their thesis projects. Sounds interesting and we check out why. the fifth year studio and out here for a lot of students it's D-Day and that's because it's submissions day. Submissions when it comes to an architecture school is a huge deal. Students spend weeks on end making projects like these. As we speak, they're sitting out here waiting for their teachers to come and evaluate their pre-final projects. We have Rahi over here who's got one such model which makes absolutely no sense to me and which is why we have him here explaining to us what the thought process was behind this. Rahi, it says BMW assembly plant. Was this something that was shoved on you or something you came up with? No, actually we get time for this. Initially in this semester everybody is given time to choose topics for the thesis. Mm -hmm. This is the first time in your five years then when you can actually choose And how, how much time did it, it take you to come up with the final projects? What did you start off with? Did you start off on paper drawing it out and then come yeah, to Yeah, initially we start on butter paper, sketching it out, then we put it on AutoCAD, drafting it out and then the model comes. Okay, so while many like Rahil wait out here for teachers to come and evaluate their projects, we take a quick look at their studios. Reminds me a little of that program Crystal Maze where every studio has a different character. Go check some of them out. I don't know about you, but I definitely wouldn't bunk if those were what my classes look like. Lots more to come up after the break on this unexplored territory that they call SPA. Did you know that there was a film made in the 1980s totally dedicated to architecture school shot completely at SPA? That and lots more after this short break. Stay with us. You're watching You Special. You Special.